Hey, what's up you guys? It's me, it's Jacob, and we're back. We're back in Christchurch. I'm sitting in the back of my van, and it's time for me to reflect on the weekend that was. Today's, today's date is Monday, November the 23rd. It's 1.33 in the p.m., and it's two days post-marathon. I think I'll take these off. Two days post-marathon. This is a video I wanted to make yesterday, but uh, I didn't. Um, if I did make it yesterday, the first thing that would come to mind is, fuck, my calves are killing me. <laughs> Doesn't matter how long I stretch them out, they're still killing me. Today, I actually don't feel too bad. And to be honest, guys, believe it or not, I think tomorrow, being three days post-marathon, I think I'll feel pretty much, as far as my legs go, pretty much back to normal. So I guess the age-old question goes, can you run a marathon? Can you run 42.2 Ks without training? Well. I did have a base level of fitness, but I didn't do much specific training whatsoever, and it seems that you can. Wow, yeah, swear to God I'm with it. I don't see nobody in my lane is quite go get it like me. Wow, please don't be wasting my time with that business. Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I want to try and cover everything in this video, but I don't want to make it go on too long. So I'm just going to talk about, I want to talk about my expectations of the race and, and how things went. So I originally started doing, you know, 20k runs at, in two hours. So I, I kind of doubled that and I thought, well, okay, well, if I really do push myself, especially through the first 21ks, I may actually be able to get a four hour marathon. Well, I ran the first half of the race, this is including up and down, so the trail, it's trail running, it's not, um, it's not on tarmac. Well, there, there, there probably was about 10 or 12 k's of the 42 k's that was on the road. The rest of it was on compact um, track, trail, and, you know, it was also hilly, a little bit. There was inclines, something I hadn't dealt with before. I had not dealt with inclines ever. In fact, I, I didn't do any specific running uphill because I honestly, I honestly, not only did I never really think that I'd be doing this marathon this year, but I thought that the marathon was going to be on the, on the road and that any inclines were, were going to be very subtle at best. And they were subtle. The inclines were subtle. It wasn't that bad. I powered through the first half. Okay, so guys, after the first half, I went through uh, 21Ks, 21.1Ks in two hours and three minutes. And I thought... This is going swimmingly. This is going better than I could have expected. I thought, you know what? I may not get a four-hour marathon, but I'm certainly going to get a four-hour and 30 marathon. So my, as, I, as I went through the halfway point, my, my goals changed from four hours to four hours 30. The scenery is just incredible, bro. I, I cannot describe how awesome it was. I, I felt on top of the world. I felt adrenaline and emotion that I, I hadn't felt before. You know what I mean? As, as I was coming across, as I was coming up some of these hills, these inclines, coming across the top and, and catching a glimpse of, of the scenery that was awaiting me. And then I, I thought about the reasons that I was racing. You know what I mean? My kids. Um, I thought about the whole year that's got me to this point and I thought about how, I thought about loads of things, man. You've got lots of times to, you've got lots of time to think. You do. But the one thing that I, I decided to do it the last minute and I was glad I did was was I took my headphones so I did have my favorite music pumping in my ears from the moment we started to basically the moment we finished and that was a huge help it was a huge help because there's certain songs that you do get your pace you know you get your sort of your run stride at that beat and it really suits your you know your level of um, energy at that time and it just works it works for me so the music was a big help. That was something I could not decide whether I was going to take with me because I didn't know how I was going to hold my phone. But in the end, I decided to wear my, my really tight thermal, long sleeve thermal, and I actually tucked my phone up, you know, up my sleeve and up uh, by my bicep. So it sat there throughout the whole entire race nicely. And I know it sat there nicely because halfway through the race, I kind of buzzed out. I was like, fuck, this music's in my ear but I can't actually feel my phone. Where is my phone? And I started tapping my, my shorts and I was like, what the fuck, what, what, what's happened? And then I realized that, oh no, it's actually just sitting there in my arm. So it was perfect. I'm glad I took it. And that was a last minute decision that I made. 
Moving forward for my next marathon, I'm definitely going to get an arm band for my phone and I'm going to continue to race with music if it's allowed. But that's something you you won't know. I mean, certain marathons don't actually allow headphones, but I'm I'm of the opinion that even if they said no, you're not going to wear headphones, I'd still bring them, I'd have them in my pocket, and when I really needed them, I'd bring them out. And that's probably going to be how I do it next time. I'm probably going to probably going to try and use music as a tool to push me through the last half. So I'd probably run, you know, the first half of the race without music and then turn it on when I passed halfway and it gives you something to look forward to um, and it certainly helps, it helps me anyway. But the, the, the overall atmosphere, the buzz of the place, you know, the place we started, the, the, the venue, Millbrook Resort, oh my god, oh my god, like talk about the scenery that surrounds you, the, the actual place, the venue that we started from is amazing, like oh, absolutely incredible, great place to start, you know, you're buzzing before you even start and uh, I was there at 8 o'clock, uh, gave my gave my bag to the, the people that take it to the, the end line, to the finish line, so you can pick up your bag with your stuff in it. So I put this camera in there, I put my phone in there. No, I didn't because I had it on me. Put my wallet in there and my keys, gave it to them and, and took my place in the starter's shoot, they call it. So they had uh, from three hours up to four hours, you, you split yourself into, you know, whatever time category you thought you were going to be. It was either three hours or under, three to three and a half hours, three and a half to four or four and above. So I went at the back of the four and a half. So I went right at the back of the four hour plus group. And for the first, for the first half of that race, I found myself just constantly passing people, constantly passing people. I did get a tip before I started that said, even if you think you are going to run a four hour marathon, don't start at the start of that group. Start at the back because even you know, for your own morale throughout the race. It's much nicer passing people than constantly having people pass you. So I just took my opportunities. If I did want to, you know, it's, it, you are, you're like little cars on these trails, man. You, you sort of, you pull out, you make a pass, you might pass two or three people and then you, you bring yourself back in because, you know, people behind you might be wanting to pass. It's, it's like a little, like a little convoy, you know, there was, uh, there was 1400 full marathon participants. There was a half marathon too, there was a 10k run, and there was a 5k kids run. So it was a full day, the marathon began at 8.30am, and I came in to the finish at around about 1.30. So it was a big day, it was a big day, but uh, before I let you guys know the times and the splits, that's what I'll finish on. I'll finish off on the stats, um, because I did manage to track the whole entire run on Strava, and I will run through uh, the screenshots of that in a second. But before I do, I want to talk about the biggest challenge that came throughout the race. And the biggest challenge that came throughout the race was um, the onset of major, major lower body cramps. These are cramps that I've never had before. I, I've never had cramps. I've certainly never had cramps due to uh, running and running and running and running and running and not stopping. But that's pretty much what happened. So at K30, at kilometre 30, I received my first inkling of cramp. And it was in my calf. And it sh shot up my leg. And I thought, what the fuck was that? Oh my god. Have I just pulled my calf? But no, it was, it was cramp. So I continued to run. About two minutes later, it happened again. Kept going. About 30 seconds later, it happened again, and I was like, fuck me, dead. what is going on? I can't run. I can't run. This is stopping me. It's debilitating, this cramp. And it was in my calves. And so what happens with cramp, or at least this is what happened with me, if you tense that muscle slightly in the wrong way, it cramps up, right? So for me to continue running step after step and try and stop my calves from cramping, I had to run with my, I'm just trying to remember whether that's plantar or dorsiflexion, but my toes pointed upwards. I had to run with my calves uh, uh, elongated, you know what I mean? And that was my calf, so, okay, so that was at, that was at 12 k's to go, that was at 30 k's. And I realized that, well, my, my time of four hours definitely is gone. My, if I keep this up and I can only walk, my time of four hours 30 is definitely gone. And if I can only walk the rest of this race, man, my time of five hours is actually going to be gone. And I'm going to get over five hours. And I, I couldn't let that happen. 
I could not let that happen, guys. So I was dealing with cramps that I've never felt before. The cramps went from my, my calf to the other calf, then started affecting my quads, then started affecting my hamstrings, which was fucking terrible. And then, I mean, if you've got cramping hamstrings, you ain't running. And then finally, last but not least, it started affecting my adductors, my internal adductors on the inside of my thigh. So it was almost like, like for the last 5Ks, guys, I pushed through, last 5Ks, I was running like an old man, just praying to God that, well, that one, I finished, which I knew I was going to because I, I could walk through the cramp, but it's, I couldn't really run through the cramp. I certainly couldn't run at any, any, any uh, good pace. So my pace dropped back, but I did continue to jog, and I just hoped that if there was a big group of people, because you know, the, the further you get, the, the closer you get to the finish, the more people there are, they're all cheering you on. And I, all I kept on thinking was, oh God, okay, these guys are cheering me. I just hope that one of these massive big jolts that's gonna go through my body due to these cramps does not happen right in the front of these people. And if it does happen, I'm gonna try and fake it till I make it and just keep running. You know what I mean? I, 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 <laughs> I could see a big one of those hamstring cramps literally collapsing me to the ground. It could have, but it didn't. Thank God. So I got through. I got through the race. We finished. I got four hours, 55 minutes and 44 seconds. I spent, I, I ran for 30 Ks, walked for two and then jogged for 10. And that's 42 Ks. 42 Ks of the Queenstown trails done in one day in under five hours. So my first ever marathon, my very first marathon got under five hours. I think it was probably a, a pretty taxing marathon to start with, which I'm proud of again. I got the medal. Um, and we did it, man. We did it. We did it. Literally made the decision like a week before the marathon. Got my camera out. Began vlogging it with you guys. And we made it to the end, man. So I hope, I do hope that that this video series, I hope that me challenging myself like this and, and pushing through and, and accomplishing, you know, something big that a lot of people may see as impossible, but it's certainly not. I hope that that motivates just one of you guys out there. You know what I mean? Sitting on the couch, doing whatever you're doing. I don't know what you're doing right now watching this video. You might be at work. You know, you might be laying in bed. You might have just got up. Who fucking knows? But I know that there are things in your life that you know you could do or you could start working on Start trying to tick off certain little challenges, goals, tasks that are going to bring you closer to that end goal, whatever it may be. You know what I mean? I have an end goal. I've got an end goal. I've got an end goal. And that is to be a, a well-rounded overall athlete, physically capable of doing anything. You know? You tell me to come surfing with you. Of course I can. You tell me to come snowboarding with you. Of course I can. You tell me to come fucking skateboarding with you well i haven't done it since i was 10 but i'll give it a shot you tell me to come and do a marathon i'll do it you tell me to come and play a game of rugby fuck yeah you tell me you want to do a bodybuilding show in six months i'll prep with you you know what i mean you know what i mean i guess that's somewhat what it's about for me personally i want to feel very very capable uh, before i lose the capabilities you know what i mean so i'm 29 i turned 30 in in four days and and this challenge was something I wanted to do before the age of 30 and we got it done. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This was my, this was my, a uh, little bit of a, uh, what do you call it? This was my reflection on the weekend that was and my reflection on my very first marathon, the Sotheby's Queenstown Marathon, which has already been announced for next year. So if I did want to, I could literally go and join up now for, for next year's marathon and while I was down there in Queenstown, like if I had been with a mate and he had said to me, yeah, let's do it next year, I would have been like, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, and in fact, I'll tell you right now, if I'm in New Zealand and I'm anywhere close, in fact, if I'm anywhere close to New Zealand, November next year, I reckon this could be a, an annual occasion. That, that was a sick race, really sick. I mean, the scenery around Queenstown is, is just incredible. I'd completely forgotten what the drive was like from Christchurch to Queenstown. But if you are ever in New Zealand, if you are ever in the South Island, and you're going to go from Christchurch to Queenstown, don't go down the coast. Go through the middle of the fucking country. It is to die for. It's blown me away. It really has blown me away. 
And I can only say, check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. If you've liked this video, please like it. If you want to subscribe, please do. All your support is appreciated. It's fuel for me. It's fuel for me to, to continue making these videos. Your comments, your likes, your support. It's fuel for a YouTuber, it really is. I'm not a company. I'm not one of these flashy, highly produced shows or companies on YouTube, which seems to be what a lot of it is these days. I'm one of those guys, like the old school YouTubers, picks up a camera, brings you along, behind the scenes. I talk about my thoughts, feelings, emotions, quite openly and honestly, um, because this is me. YouTube is about you. It's about you bringing your message, your videos, your life, your content to, to the internet and sharing it. And that's, that's, that's what I fell in love with originally. And that's the way that I, I plan to continue it. So <sighs> thank you so much for watching guys. It's time for me to go, but I will say one thing. If you're still here, if you're still here, Go on Google right now, write in your country. If your country's too big, if you live in the States, your country's probably gonna to be too big. But for me, living in New Zealand, five million people, I was able to write into Google, New Zealand marathons, New Zealand marathon calendar. There is almost a marathon or some sort of long run on every second weekend. Like if you really wanna do it guys, type into Google your area marathons right now, right now. Target the next one, tell everyone you're gonna do it, enter, and fucking do it. And let me know about it down in the comment section below. And if you don't wanna let people know about it on YouTube, hit me up on Instagram, because I'm always available on there. Now I'm gonna go. That's my challenge to you guys. Hit a marathon, man, fuck it, why not? Peace out.